Welcome back, everyone. This is Jennifer McGuire, and thanks for joining me. So I enjoy die cutting just as much as I enjoy stamping. There are so many techniques that you can do, and I'm really excited because companies are coming out with more and more dies that can be layered together to create really dynamic, realistic looks. So today I'm using some gorgeous layering dies, and I'm going to share with you some tips and techniques and talk about different adhesives that I found have worked well for me for layering die cuts and much more. Let's start with this card. It's actually quite simple, even though it looks very involved. I used the new Altenew Peony Dream 3D die set. This set contains all you need to die cut layers of flowers that you put on top of each other to create a dimensional look. It has everything you need to create a large peony, a medium one, and a cluster of leaves. I'm just going to do the large flower and the leaves. For this card, I'm going to cut my pieces from colored cardstock. Now, I went through my full cardstock pieces to find colors that I wanted to use together. However, I recommend using scraps. I wanted to make several cards the same. That's why I went with full sheets. I'm using my Big Shot Express die cutting machine today simply because I'm doing a lot of die cutting at once. If I were just making a couple flowers, I would use a smaller machine like the Altenew machine, but I wanted to crank out a bunch of pieces at once, so I've got my bigger machine here. And I am just die cutting pieces from these flowers. Now, I showed you earlier the guide that I cut from the packaging from Altenew, and that guide is really helpful. It shows you which layers to cut in a lighter color and which layers to cut in a darker color, and I'm just following that guide. So I know that that piece there in particular needs to be dark, the, the one right above it needs to be light, and that really is quite helpful. So that's why I cut that guide out of the packaging and I'm keeping it in with my die set. So I'm going through and cutting all the layer pieces from the different shades of cardstock. Now for this card, I decided to use a liquid adhesive. The Tim Holtz Distress Collage uh, is wonderful for using as an adhesive, as well as other things, but I use it mostly for adhesive. You don't need a lot of it, and the nice thing is, is you can put it down, but while it's wet, you can still move it around, so you can get it positioned just right. Once you're happy with it, you can just press it down, put something heavy on it, and let it dry. It dries pretty quickly on paper. So I'm going to layer all of these together following that guide that I got from the stamp or the die packaging and glue these all together with the liquid adhesive. There are a few other adhesives I like for die cut layering and I'll share those later in this video. Now, if you don't have a layering die set like this one, where all the pieces are meant to layer together, you can layer together anything you may already have. Say you have a few different size flowers, you can try layering those together to create a dimensional flower. I encourage you to look at what you already have also. So here I'm putting on the last layer, this is the lightest color of cardstock, and then I'll put this center in. It's a little yellow circle with a red dot in the center. And it's amazing, as you're putting these together, you're kind of unsure if it's gonna turn out, but once you have the pieces together, it's absolutely gorgeous. For the leaf cluster, there are two pieces to layer together, so I have a light and a dark green, and I'll make three of those leaves so that I can really fill my card with this flower and leaves. Next, I want to create the note card that this will go on, and I'm using the Altenew Pattern Play Diamonds stamp set. This has a large background stamp on it that's perfect for a subtle background. I'm inking it up with Versamark ink, and I'm stamping it onto a white note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Putting a piece of scrap paper over it so I can really press this down and make sure that all of the ink transfers onto my note card. Next, I'm going to sprinkle on some white satin pearl embossing powder. I really want to be sure that I use something that isn't too distracting because I have that bold flower on there. This pearl embossing powder will just give me this beautiful lattice pattern with a pearl shine that catches the light nicely but still gives a tone on tone look. Now after I heat embossed the front of this card, I noticed that it was warped a little bit. It wouldn't close very nicely. So what I did is I put the note card in a folded piece of typing paper or scrap paper, something thin, and then I just put it between my cutting plates and ran it through my die cutting machine as I would as if I was die cutting. And it just squishes and flattens the note card out, which is really handy. 
Okay, now for the next die cutting pieces, I'm going to use Stick It Adhesive. Stick It Adhesive is a double-sided adhesive that is very thin. What I'm doing here is putting that double-sided adhesive onto a piece of black cardstock so that what I'll have is a piece of black cardstock with adhesive on one side. Because the Stick It Adhesive is so thin, this cardstock with adhesive on the back will die cut beautifully. I've never had any problems with it. So now I have a big piece of cardstock with adhesive on the back and I can cut a bunch of letters from this. The dies for the letters that I'm using today are new from Altenew. This is the Simple Alphabet. I like the size of this and that it's a font that can be used for many styles of cards. I went ahead and die cut a bunch of letters from this, the whole alphabet, and I'm popping them all out here. I'm going to keep my extra letters in a little baggie so that if I ever need them in the future, they're ready to go. I'm just going to use the letters to spell hello for this first card example. So now I have all my pieces ready to go. I am again using a liquid adhesive on the back of my flower and leaves to arrange them on my card. Because I use that liquid adhesive, notice how I can rotate things around and move it until I'm happy with where I have it. Then I can press it down, maybe put something heavy on it and let it dry on its own. Now this particular adhesive, the Distress Collage Medium, it dries matte and it dries clear. So if some of it ends up outside of the floral area, you won't see it. But I just used a little bit behind the flower as you saw, and that should hold it well. Next, I'm going to go ahead and squirt a few more drops of that adhesive just behind different areas of the flower so I can be sure that it stays put. I have my tea ruler on my card here so that I have a straight line in which I can put the little letters. I want to make sure I line these up straight, so I'm using that tea ruler as an edge in which I can place all the letters. Now with the stick it adhesive, it actually doesn't stick well until you press it down. So you have the opportunity to move things around until you're happy with the position. Then you want to press it firmly down with a bone folder or your finger. I am going to squirt just a little bit more adhesive under some of the areas that have some room behind it that are kind of popped up a bit. If you squirt a big glob under there, it will keep that dimension as it dries. Okay, so now I'm putting some shimmer onto my Hello die cuts, just so it shines a little bit and catches the light. And then I'm going to coat it with Tonic Crystal Glaze. This is a clear product that will give it dimension and shine. The nice thing about this product is it really comes out of the bottle very easily. So it's easy to cover those letters and it dries pretty quickly. So you can see the shine that we have there on the Hello. Okay, my second example is this Hugs card. It's very similar to the first, but I wanted to show you a few different options. For this one, instead of liquid adhesive, I used my Xyron Creative Station. I've had this for a while, but basically it's a tool that turns your die cuts into stickers. Xyron has several different machines. Some are smaller and less expensive, so I'll link to them so you can check out the different options. But basically you put your little dies, die cuts into the platform here. So I'm just putting them in there, laying them right as far as they will go in there. Once I have the die cuts in there, I just crank this and you'll see them start to come out the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more die cuts in there. I'm feeding them in from the other side. When I'm done, I just crank this and you can see them all come out. Then I use this little blade here to kind of cut it like a trimmer. So I can cut that whole sheet off. And here we have a sticker sheet. All I have to do is kind of press my finger around all of the stickers, kind of use my bone folder to make sure all the adhesive transfers. Then I remove this top layer, which has the extra adhesive on it. And there we have a sheet of stickers ready to go. So there are some advantages to using the liquid adhesive, and there are some advantages to doing this. So I thought by showing you a few different options, you can choose what you think would be better for you for layered die cutting. I'll tell you, this is really fun to put these together like a sticker. I love stickers as, as a kid, so this kind of takes me back to those days. If you find any of your adhesive kind of gets outside of the die cuts, you can use your adhesive eraser. That's, in a very, that's a very inexpensive tool that I do recommend having. It's that little square thing that you see there off to the right. So I'm layering all my pieces together just like I did on the last example, but this time I don't need to use the liquid adhesive because the adhesive is already on the back of these thanks to that Xyron tool. 
Okay, once I'm done, I can go ahead and peel these off like a sticker and add them to my card. But I decided to do something fun to this to show you another way that you can use layered dies to create something different looking. What I did is I pressed my Versamark ink pad, which is just a clear stink, stinky, not stinky, sticky <laughs> ink pad. I pressed that all over these die cuts, completely covered it, pushed as much ink onto them as I could. And I'm putting on some clear embossing powder. Being pretty generous with the embossing powder, not tapping off too much of the excess because I really want a thick coat of clear embossing on this. If you have any kind of ultra thick embossing powder, you could use that instead. Now I'm gonna go ahead and heat set this and it'll give a beautiful shine. And notice because I used clear embossing powder, it takes that flower and makes it darker. So this flower will end up much darker than the first flower where I did not put the clear embossing on. I wanted to add one more layer of embossing to this. So once it was cool, I added some more Versamark ink and some more clear embossing powder. And then I heat set it again. And this ends up looking like a ceramic piece. I don't know how to describe it. It's absolutely beautiful. It reminds me some of some of the pins that my grandma used to wear, the brooches. Gorgeous with lots of shine. So I created a note card with that diamond pattern background, just like I did in the last example. And I'm arranging my flowers as I did in the last example. But remember, this already has the adhesive on the back. So I'm gonna move them around till I'm happy and then I'll press them down firmly. And this time I used the word hugs from the same simple alphabet die set from Altenew. So both of these flowers were made with the same colors of cardstock, but the one on the right looks much darker because of that embossing. It also looks more like one piece with lots of dimension because the embossing kind of pulls it all together. Just wanted to show you a couple different options. If you wanted this to be a lighter color flower, you would just need to start with lighter colors of cardstock. Okay, my next example shows yet another adhesive option for die cut layering and also how to combine your die cut layering with alphabet dies to create a fun window look. For this card, I'm using another 3D die set from Altenew. This is the Rose Flurry set. As you can see on this key that I cut out of the packaging, there are many flower and leaf options in this. Now, since there are so many dies in the set, I decided to cut them all apart and put them in piles of which go together. Then I put each pile in a little baggie so I can keep them separate. All these little baggies I will fold closed and put into that pocket over on the left so that they're all together but separated so I don't have to fuss with figuring out which go together each time I use this. So when I'm ready to create the first flower like this large rose, I'm just going to take that bag and I know those dies go together. Now for this layering die cut, I'm going to use the Couture Creations double-sided adhesive. This is a lot like the sticket adhesive I showed you earlier, but it's thicker. So I'm putting some white cardstock on this so that I'll end up with a piece of white cardstock with adhesive on the back. Now this big release paper sheet here, keep that because it's nice to do any kind of adhesive work on it because it's non-stick. So this is my white cardstock with adhesive on the back. I'm going to cut all of these pieces for this one flower from white cardstock. Now, since this is a thicker adhesive, the die doesn't cut through the release paper on the back as much as it does with the stick it. So you can kind of end up with a sticker sheet with this option too. So I die cut all of these from white cardstock instead of the colored cardstock like I did in the last examples. By doing just white, I don't have to search for colors of cardstock that go together. Instead, I can use any markers I want to color them any colors I want. You can even use your Crayola markers for this. It really doesn't matter. You could use watercolor. You could use your ink with your ink blending tools, anything you want. But by die cutting them all from white cardstock, it really saves time in finding all the colors you need from your cardstock stash. Now, since I colored these very heavily with Copic markers, I need to make sure that the, the marker is dry before I try to put the adhesive together. So that's why you saw me heat it with my heat gun. You could also just set it aside to dry. It doesn't take that long. And then these have the adhesive on the back and I can just peel off each and put them together like stickers once again. Okay, so I went ahead and die cut the other flowers from the same Rose Flores die set. 
and I die cut them all from white cardstock using that Couture Creations thick double-sided adhesive. And then I colored them with different shades of like rose colors and yellow colors. And now I'm just layering them all together now that they're dry. So this adhesive option allows you to just put adhesive on the back of any cardstock you want, but it doesn't cut all the way through the release paper so you end up with a sticker sheet. So it's just yet another option that you might want to consider. Now for this card, I also use the new Altenew Caps Bold Alphabet Dies. I really like this die set. I have the lowercase, that's something that they've had for a while now, and I'm glad that they've added the uppercase. I've lined up the word hugs using my T ruler and my grid workspace here. And I'm taping this with some temporary tape here to the center of a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of white cardstock. I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine and I can save the hugs letters for another project since I'm just using the negative space today. I'll link to a video where I show lots of ideas for using large alphabet dies on your cards. Okay, so I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch uh, side folding note card here. The, the fold is up there at the top. And I'm just going to use a piece of tape to temporarily add my hugs die cut panel onto the front of my note card. So I'm centering it on the front of my note card. There's a little trim there that you can see. And I'm just taping on the top so I can flip this open. Now I'm going to position my flowers to be behind the hugs die cut window. And I'm just using that piece of tape up there as a flap to keep it in place so I can keep lifting it and looking and seeing where the flower peeks through. I have this purple flower here. I decided not to use him. I'm gonna save him for another card. But I arranged the, per the pink, the peach, and the yellow flowers behind the hugs window. Once I was happy with those, I'm going to go ahead and remove the release paper from the back and press them into place onto the note card. I will keep checking to make sure that they're showing through the little hugs die cut window very nicely. Once I'm happy, I'll press them into place. Next, I will remove that negative space hugs from the front of the card. Just remove that little piece of tape. And instead, I'm going to put some double-sided foam tape on the back of the hugs piece just around the outside edges. And I'll place this right onto our card and my roses will be positioned perfectly since we were testing it out earlier. Next I have the layered leaf clusters from that same Rose Fleury's die set. I love these leaves. I'm going to kind of tuck them into the openings and have some of the leaves kind of coming out onto the front of the card. Remember it's got the adhesive on the back of it so I can easily put it in place and press it to stay there. If you're concerned about something might come loose, you can always squirt a little bit of that strong liquid adhesive that I showed you earlier behind the pieces, and then they will be secure. So here I'm just kind of playing with where to put the leaves and add this little flower here to the front. And once I'm happy, I can press everything into place. Now at this point, I realized I forgot to add my little sentiment underneath this. I wanted to stamp something. So I'm using my mini Misty to make sure I don't mess it up. So I'm going to first ink this up and stamp it very lightly, just to make sure that the ink is transferring onto all of this dimension. It turns out it is, so I'm going to do it one more time and just stamp it again lightly and I'll get a nice crisp result. Thank goodness for a stamping tool for saving the day on adding our little stamp sentiments when you forget. That stamp sentiment, by the way, is from the I Adore You stamp set from Altenew. It's an older one, but I really like that sentiment. I also added a few jewels here and there, and there you can see the finished card with the layered die cuts and the die cut window. Okay, I have one more card example for you today showing how to do layered die cutting. Now this one features a really cool, clever new die from Altenew. This is the Spring Shower Cover Die. Now it cuts four and a quarter by five and a half with all those beautiful flowers, but they also include a guide that shows you how you can use the little flower pieces to layer together to create some fun dimensional flowers. So I went ahead and die cut this from some white cardstock here, and I'm just popping out all those little pieces. I can save those pieces for another project. I'm going to put some liquid adhesive on the back of this and add it to my card. I could have used any of the other adhesive options that I showed you in this video, but this just seemed to be the best option for me here. 
I just put little dots of adhesive here and there over the back and I add it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card. Now whenever you use liquid adhesive, I do recommend putting something heavy over it for a few minutes just to make sure it holds. Okay, now I also have some white cardstock here that I put some of the Couture Creations double-sided adhesive on the back of and die cut with that same background die. So basically this is a sheet of little flower and leaf stickers. And now I did it from white paper so that I could color the different flowers and leaves whatever colors I wanted. Then using that little key over to the left, I can layer them up on my card. Now there are many different ways I could have put this card together, but this one, this way seemed to be the best for me because I didn't want to have to go and cut all these little pieces from different colors of cardstock. So by coloring them with my markers, it saves me time. Also, I decided to put the adhesive on the back of it so I could just peel them off like stickers and put them in place on my card over there on the left just like I would be putting together a puzzle. So I am putting these pieces into their place on my card, but I'm also layering some pieces together. You can see there on the card on the left, there's that layered pink flower. I just followed the guide that was on the Alta New packaging, and I just had fun putting little pieces together to create some fun layered flowers that are inlaid into the background of this card. Now I didn't color all of the pieces, I just did some here and there, and then I decided to add some accents to my little die cut flower pieces with little dots using my white jelly roll pen. Remember, you can decorate these layered die cuts however you want. You could put some inking on them on the edges to give it some dimension. You can do little white dots like this. You could do shimmer. There are many ways you can bring these little die cuts to life. And this one, I thought the white little dots were perfect. I also added a hello sentiment using the simple alphabet die. Also a little stamp sentiment and some pearls here and there. I really had fun putting this one together and I think it'd be fun to do these in a bunch of different colors. Okay, so there you have it as several examples and options for doing die cut layering. I hope this was helpful to you. I link all of the products that I use in the description below if you're interested in finding them. Also in the middle here, I have a couple other videos you might like. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll return again soon and have a great week.